Touch of Gaming, episode number 110. All right, everybody, and welcome to the Touch of Gaming podcast. As always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison. For 110 of these things, as always, I'm joined by Jared Schultz. Jared, how's it going, my friend? Going great. It's kind of hot, though. It, it is warm. It, it's actually really warm. Now. Actually, today, I, I can't complain too much. We're actually getting uh, severe thunderstorm warnings. I got dumped on on the drive to work. I couldn't even see out my window. It was pretty crazy. And it looks like it's coming down for a second pass. So, yay, storms. Hopefully, we don't lose power before the end of the show, because that would kind of suck. That would be tragic. That would be. So, uh, how have you been? It's been a, been a week since we last talked. I've been good. Yeah, nothing too exciting. Just uh, more work, and it, it's been <laughs> like the hottest week of the year here. Which I mean, let me, let me hold on. What is it in? It's like thirty-two in Celsius. Wow. Yeah, it's like eighty-five, but we don't have AC, so it's been warm. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's about the same here. We we hit thirty-six a couple days this week, and and then with the humid X, it's like forty-five. It's just it's stupid, but but good because I I love the summer because we don't get enough of it here in Winnipeg. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's get into the show. Uh, before we get started, I have a couple announcements. First, I just want to remind everybody to uh, sign up for a newsletter if you want to find out about all of our live shows that we're doing. I actually had a, 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 a fair number of people sign up um, since we've been announcing it again. So uh, just head on over to vgpodcast.com. Right at the top of the page is a little newsletter button. If you click it, we'll uh, I'll send out uh, email announcements, kind of letting you guys know when our live shows are. Uh, for that week and uh, if we do any kind of surprise things uh, we'll we'll send the email it's not too much you're going to get maybe one message a week so it's not going to be a high volume uh, notice list but uh, if you want to find out when we're doing live shows uh, you can do that just a reminder that every Friday at 10 p.m central we're doing the bonus stage podcast we did our first one last Friday and it was awesome. It turned out so well. And we're going to be doing another one starting tomorrow. So if you want to come and watch us do what used to be a radio show, but now is a podcast with video and audio components, uh, you definitely want to uh, join us there. Uh, 10 p.m. Central at vgpodcast.com slash live. And Jared and I have kind of um, finalized uh, what we think is going to be the time slot for TOG, at least for the next little while. And that's going to be Thursdays at 8 p.m. Um, although in three Thursdays or two Thursdays from now I won't be able to do that so we might have to change that up a little bit but for most weeks it's going to be Thursdays at 8 p.m. central so if you want to watch us do it live uh, we have Annika, Quacko, uh, Skizix, and Tadius sitting in the chat room right now we got a few more people that are watching live that aren't chatting with us why don't you click the little the little join us in the chat room button that would be great um, and then we can uh, chat with you guys while we're doing the show but if you want to join the people there and uh, come in and, and watch what we do. Uh, you can do it every Thursday at 8 p.m. Central at vgpodcast.com slash live. <sighs> that was a lot of talking. We haven't even started talking about games there, Jared. Yeah, it's a it's a party. So. <laughs> I, I joined your bonus stage and I was there in the chat room, you know, making fun of you and general tomfoolery. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was good. <laughs> it, it was a really good show. I mean, we play, it, it's a different show than what I, that I normally do because since it, uh, it, it, it gave birth or was born on the radio, um, it, it has a music component. Um, we're not doing as much of that now since um, we're not we're not on a radio. But yeah, we we separate our sections with um, chip tunes. Um, we want to do a lot of things that aren't just like video game reviews. So we're going to start talking about uh, video game themed web series and comics and and all that stuff. Anything that that revolves around gaming, we're going to start delving into some of that stuff and uh, doing contests and things like that. So. Um, if you, if you like gaming, you'll definitely like the bonus stage. You can subscribe at vgpodcast.com or you can tune in every Friday at 10 p.m. Central. All right, Jared, let's get yes, into the show. Please join us. <laughs> I'm getting echoes again, so I'm just going to I'm gonna ignore it. And why don't you tell us what you've been playing? Okay, well, I, um, I've been playing Pocket Planes, but much, much less. I'm... Um, there's a couple of cool things that they've added in. Uh, so if you ever see the gold package, it's a secret part to a special plane. Nice. I have only now seen three of them, and so as soon as I get them, I try to deliver them as quickly as possible. I prioritize them. And do they time out? Um, well, I think well, I think once you get them into a layover slot, they won't. But they they would if 
you get new jobs every five minutes. I, right. I don't know okay. if they stick. So. I know. I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 So, and then the other funny thing is they are doing kind of like more special events. So last week on the 4th of July, they had an independence day event where everyone was, you know, dressed up like founding fathers of the USA. And, and then whenever you took packages, it was fireworks and stuff like that. Yep. So it's, it's kind of a cool little thing that they're doing. And right now with comic con going on, uh, everyone is dressed up as a cosplay character that's going to where is it San, San Francisco? No, no, it's San Diego. San Diego. Sorry, it's the other so, side. Yeah, so everyone going to San Diego is dressed up as different characters. So you know, every once in a while you'll move comic book characters. It's it's kind of entertaining. Yeah, you you move the Mario Brothers or um, Stormtroopers, or you move like the TARDIS or comic books or pizza as your cargo. It's uh, it's pretty funny. TARDIS. I didn't get the reference. <laughs> I mean, you, you some move a, some weird phone a, booth thing. I don't. I don't. I don't know what that is. Sorry. Yeah, you move a phone booth, and I was just <laughs> not figuring it out. So, um, then I have been playing more, or I've been playing Happy Street. Mm-hmm. I made a well. I have a fake Canadian account that I've had for a while. You're you're our favorite fake Canadian, Jared. Thanks, and. Uh, I picked that up and so I've been playing some of that and I like it. And I think that like the pocket planes addiction. Nice. So yeah, it's at least useful for that. Cool. And then, uh, probably the most of what I've been playing lately is outwitters. So this is the new game by one man left who did tilt to live. You like tilt to live quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. So this is their newest game. It came out last week. It is free, and there is an in-app purchase, but I will be talking about that later as my review. Cool. Because I've been playing a ton of it. Cool. So what about you, Lloyd? What have you been playing? Um, I've been uh, obsessively playing Happy Street. Uh, really, really digging that game. I think I'm... Oh, what level am I? I can't even remember what level, but uh, I think I'm level 12, I want to say. I think that's right. I'll load it up while we're playing, um, or while we're talking, rather. Um, opened up the mountains, building a bunch of different other things. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It is. It, it is. It's a good game. It's. It's slow enough and paced enough where you don't feel bad for missing turns or missing like, like completing things as soon as they're built. Um, it, it's good because there's uh, there's a currency that you really kind of need to expand, uh, but there's enough ways in the game to get it. You can either sell things to to uh, the the wolf guy or fox guy whose name I can't remember, um, or each day you get a free spin of a, um, a kind of like a, a roulette wheel or something, or sorry, a slot machine wheel, um, and you can win credits. I actually won big on pretty much my first play, so I was able to do a lot of expansions because of that, which was pretty cool. Um, really good game. Uh, hopefully it gets released worldwide soon because it's uh, it's been really stable as far like from all the games that I've tested that released in Canada first and then moved to the States, I definitely think this is one that's been probably the most stable. I've had zero issues with anything in the game and I've been playing it a lot. So um, hopefully that'll be coming out soon worldwide and then we can talk about it a little bit more. Um, on kind of Jared's recommendation last week uh, about how good Squid's Wild West was, um, I, I went and said, I'm sure I played this game and I went and I picked up the first squids and reinstalled it on my iPad and then realized that I had not actually played it. I had bought it when it was on sale and then I had, I guess removed it for, for cause I was running out of space or something and never put it back on. So thanks to Jared for not wasting the dollar that I spent on it. Um, I basically played it and it is awesome. I, I pretty much beat it from front to back, um, got all my squids to level 12, unlocked all the levels, um, beat almost all the levels with almost all the stars. Uh, I still have a few more achievements to get. Loved squids. Um, and then uh, I loved it so much, I picked up Squids Wild West. Or Well, I didn't pick it up. I had already bought it. I started playing Squids Wild West. And for as good as the first game is, um, Squids Wild West is better in pretty much every regard. So uh, I think we're going to do a joint review later in the episode, so I won't get too much more into that. I um, also played a game called The Act, which I bought yesterday. 
Um, and uh, we'll talk about that in my review later in the episode. It's uh, it's an interesting one. And also picked up a game called um, Swift Stitch, which is a kind of a one button sort of game. It's very retro styled with vector graphics. Um, it's, uh, it's free to download and you get, uh, I think, like 12 stages and then if you pay 99 cents you unlock the rest of the game and basically you're this little uh asteroids looking spaceship that looks like the spaceship from asteroids and you drive straight and when you touch the screen you turn a direction and then if you pass different colored lines it changes the direction that you'll turn um, and things like that so either you go left to right or right to left up or down or down to up and you basically have to collect items and then get to the end without dying each level has three stars um um, so if you get it, get to the end without dying, if you uh, collect all the items and some other thing, I can't even remember what it was. Um, and if you get all three stars, um, you feel good about yourself and you go into the next one. Um, really fun game. I, I just don't think I'm going to unlock the rest of it. I, I had enough of a fill with this game in the demo. So definitely check it out. It's called Swift Stitch. Um, it might be a game that, that you just love. I love the retro style graphics and everything. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of that as people that listen to the show for a while would know. Um, but I, I don't know. It's it's good, but it has some weirdness. Like one level, it just started changing things. Where there's this um, a, a line, um, like all the other ones, except instead of being dotted, it was it looked like bubbles. And when I passed through it, instead of going straight or turning up or down, I started going on a curve. So the first few times, I just crashed, and it didn't warn me about that. It was just kind of like you're gonna go through it, and you're gonna learn. So um, really polished in some areas, and unpolished in other areas. So. Um, I'm going to keep it on my iPad. Maybe one day if I'm bored, I'll uh, unlock the rest of the levels. But for now, the, the, the 10 or 12 that was in, that, that were included for free uh, was kind of enough for me. i um, been playing some other things, but I, I think that's the, the, the big ones. So, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. We'll, we'll save the rest for when we do our reviews. Sounds good. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, since we don't have lots of news to talk today, uh, we're going to talk a lot about uh, games that have come out and then do our reviews. But before that, uh, I thought we'd uh, chat a little bit about an email that we received. Um, Johnny P sent in an email, and it goes, uh, Hey guys, uh, thanks for the iOS Pulse and the TOG. Uh, after I picked up my 3DS CirclePad Pro, I had the thought. Um, and if you guys aren't familiar, the, the 3DS CirclePad Pro is this little add-on that gives you a second analog stick on the Nintendo 3DS handheld. So if... Uh, if you don't know anything about Nintendo or listen to Nintendo Pulse, you probably don't know what that is. Uh, so that's kind of what it is. So he continues, uh, that accessory proves to me that Apple could do the same thing for the iOS devices. I have almost stopped playing on the iPhone in favor of my 3DS. Why? Real buttons and a circle pad. Uh, I can't stand virtual sticks and buttons uh, that my big finger end up missing. Uh, sometimes it works, but I'm far more frustrated than happy. Additionally, your finger blocking the screen is a real nuisance. Uh, please, Apple... Make a circle pad pro, I would carry it around happily. And then he says, Wait, what am I saying? I love my 3DS and I don't want to see Nintendo get destroyed. Uh, and he says, Thanks. And that was from Johnny P. So, uh, yeah, let's chat about this for a bit, Jared. What, would you like to see a device um, like along the same vein as a circle pad pro on your iPhone or, or your iPad? Like something that has some physical buttons and some joysticks that isn't something like the iCade or whatever? Yes, and I would like Apple to bring it out because yes. I think that that's a key. Because that's the big thing. Right now, you're having a lot of other people that are bringing out different peripherals, different things to allow it to to make it work. But the issue is that without a lot of games using it or supporting it, none of them are having a huge amount of success. That that was going to be my main point. Like I have an iCade. I mean, it's right behind me in the picture, like right there. Ooh, iCade, and I love it, and I play it all the time, but there's not a week that goes by that there isn't one or two games that comes out that I, I just wish had iCade support where you know that um, a lot of games had had um, uh, what was it open faint support not every game had open faint support but a lot of them did and then Apple came out with their game center and next thing you know every game that comes out now like with maybe a few that don't has game center support because it's built into the into the SDK. Um, it's something that Apple supports from a hardware level and software level, and it it just it just works. So developers use it. If Apple did some something similar, if they had the controller kit, um, so that you would just have to include that when you're making a game, and it would map. You'd be able to map button presses to touch events or whatever, um, and then have a 
either one piece of hardware or multiple pieces of hardware that would support it, something that would maybe clip onto your iPhone and something that would be kind of a wireless controller. Uh, I could see them coming up with something like that maybe. Um, or licensing the SDK um, so other manufacturers could make devices that conform to Apple spec and then come out. Um, you would then have games like uh, Mortal Kombat or uh, Street Fighter that actually have real button support, which... I would love. I'd love to be able to play those games on my iCade. It would just make things so much nicer. So um, if Apple did it, I, I would buy it in a second. Uh, and that's probably the reason why I'm not buying the Ion um, iCade or was it iCade Mobile or something? The one that actually you, you slot your iPhone into it. Um, it, it just the, the dozen games that I would play that it supports are great, but I already play those on my on my iCade. So it doesn't really make me want to buy it anymore. Yeah, exactly. And and there's a couple of things to to go with that. Apple, it, it seems like gaming is kind of an afterthought thus far for them. Um, they haven't really crazy. come out to say, hey, gaming is actually a main focus on any of our machines. Yep. So until that happens, I, I would be a little concerned. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just, I, I don't see it necessarily happening, but I, I, it would be nice if it did. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree with you. If if Apple did it, there'd be support. Um, uh, highly unlikely that this can happen, but you never know. I mean, with uh, the, the Ouya, the um, Android-powered um, console that has been on Kickstarter for two days and it's broken like $3 million in Kickstarter funding donation things, um, maybe Apple's finally going to start taking gaming seriously. Like, they know that the bulk, like 80% of the apps downloaded are games. They know that that's where most of their money is coming from. Maybe they got to take it to the next step and have, like better support so you can play games on your Apple TV using your iOS device as a controller or come up with some hardware things that would allow you to do that as well. Um, that would be great, I, I would think. Yeah, it, it would be fantastic. What would make it even better is if it had a battery extension of some sort, you know, if there's like some sort of battery associated with the handheld since, you know, it might have a little extra bulk to it. Right. But that's just me dreaming too much. But you're right. There is a good parallel there with the, the gaming networks because there's like 10 of them before. And then all of a sudden Apple made one. And now most games come without that game center support. And maybe now with there's like 10 different peripherals, Apple will say, OK, fine, we'll we'll make our peripheral that is the official one and and we'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I can remember back in the day when I get a new iOS device or a new version of the OS and the first thing I do would be to start a open faint game so that I could get my profile moved across to my new device. Um, now open faint's almost like a, a bother to me. I don't even want to play it. Any other of the one of the things like crystal network or whatever, I don't even want to use them. Um, I, I just like game center. And if Apple did something, I know that probably a lot of people like me would be uh, basically treating it the same way. Yep. All right. Well, uh, thanks to uh, Johnny P for sending that in. Uh, and if you would like us to read your questions out on the air and give you a nice little shout out, uh, send them in. Uh, you can send your questions, thoughts, comments, game reviews, whatever to touch of gaming at or sorry, VG podcasts at gmail.com. And we'll get that on the show. Sounds good. Okay, moving on. Let's get into some of the notable releases uh, for this week before we get into the one news item that we have, which really isn't much of a news item. Um, this week has been really good for gaming. There's a lot of really, really solid titles that have been released um, and wanted to cover a, a few of them here quickly and some not so quickly. Uh, the first one is Metal Slug 3 has finally been released on uh, the iOS platform. I'm a huge Neo Geo fan. I, I love all of their arcade games pretty much. Everything that, that, uh, that SNK put out, I, I loved it. The Neo Geo was an awesome system. Um, playing games like Metal Slug on my Wii or in the arcades uh, w was great. Um, the thought of playing them on the iOS uh, platform makes me really, really happy. Uh, the game came out. It's seven dollars, um, which is expensive, but I would happily play it if it supported the iCade, and it, it does not look. Uh, it, it does not look like it does, which is really, really sad to me. Um, that is like a missed opportunity right there. Uh, I'm going to have to do some digging because a lot of developers uh, support the iCade without actually putting it in the description. So I'm going to do some searching on some of the forums and see if it does support it. Um, I'm hearing that the touchscreen controls aren't the greatest, that some people are having some issues with uh, with, with like 
button presses not firing properly or fingers moving too far away from where the controls are. Um, pretty common um, for kind of the platformer sort of games. Um, Metal Slug is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up where you're a character that moves left to right and jumps. So controls, tight controls, are a must because the game gets really frantic really fast in some areas. So um, hopefully it does support the iCade. If it does, I'm going to look into it after the show. And uh, if it does, I will buy it and give you a review next week. Uh, if not, hopefully uh, I'll send some emails to, to, to SNK Playmore and uh, beg for them to put it in. Um, the Midway Arcade collection didn't have iCade controls and I sent them an email and encouraged a bunch of other people to and then next thing you know the next update it had it so not to say that I'm the one that did it but just the the amount of people that are complaining sometimes will force a developer's hand so if it doesn't support it hopefully we can get enough people to uh, bug SNK play more and uh and get them to do that so uh, check that out if you like uh side scrolling really awesome arcade uh retro 8-bit kind of things um or 16-bit kind of things uh metal slug is definitely a great game um seven dollars is uh is a good value for a game that you're going to spend a lot of time playing um some other great games or some other interesting games um jane silent bob have come out with two games uh there's one that's called let us dance and uh it's a rhythm action game kind of uh where jay uh jason muse and silent bob which is kevin smith um they're kind of cartoony characters from the old clerks cartoon um are playing a dancing game and uh it's free and I think it's more of an advertisement for their other games they're going to be coming out with. Uh, they also came out with a game called Too Fat to Fly, uh, referencing the time when uh, Kevin Smith got, got, got kicked off of a plane for being too large. And I'm getting echoes from you. I'm going to turn you down for a second, Jared. Um, and uh, he was kicked off, I think, Southwest or something because he was too large. And, and there was like twitter fur and and problems and and it was just a, it was a social a social media nightmare but it's good that kevin smith can actually laugh about it now and uh, came up with a game called too fat to fly it's a buck on the app store there's a separate app for both the iphone and the ipad i think the ipad version is a buck 99 if i remember correctly and it's basically um a combination of angry birds and jetpack joyride so if you like those two games you might want to check into this one if you like kevin smith and his uh, his type of stuff, the the Smodco brand of things. Uh, some other games, uh, one that Jared and I are playing right now um, to hopefully talk about next episode is Pocket Heroes, and it's a turn based asynchronous online only RPG game. So you choose one of your archetype uh, characters, so you can be the paladin, the warrior, the mage, or the rogue, and you join a game with other people. You can't play by yourself. It has to be with at least one more person, and then you jump into the game and play an RPG together. Um, it's kind of a top-down um, NES-era quality RPG. Um, Jared and I, uh, our game isn't too far. I mean, you start in a forest, and you have to walk to a city, and you don't even get to see the other characters yet so our, our assumption is that once you get to the city you meet in the inn and share a beer and then go out on an adventure together um quite interesting uh i'm, I'm kind of digging it so far but uh, again i've only played like eight turns out of probably the 500 that you're going to play to to finally uh, complete the game so yeah it's kind of interesting because this game was originally scheduled to come out in spring 2012 and as you know we're a little past what most people would consider springtime um, it's springy. It's springy. You, <laughs> Stuff is still growing, and it's warm. So I guess I guess it's not. Oh yeah, no, it's summer. Yeah. So it was kind of interesting that you know they they keep pushing it back and pushing it back, and now it's finally out. So yeah, yeah, we're we're giving it a shot, and it'll mm -hmm. be interesting to see how it plays out. I kind of think of it's it's a little bit like a roguelike. Um, yeah. Maybe we don't know if there's if the random dungeons are there, but you know you're moving around your little character and clicking attack and that type of thing yeah um so yeah, in definitely. the chat room says it's not fully fleshed out to me and i would tend to agree so far but i'm not very far so i can't really say for sure yeah one thing that kind of annoys me so far and as i said i've taken eight or ten turns so it's not very far into the game at all um is there's no undo and you it's easy to accidentally click somewhere with your character and then you just walk there and it's like okay well now i'm i'm like I, I'm in front of a bunch of enemies and they're going to kill me because your healing items only heal like two or four hit points and their damage is much greater than that. It's 
I don't know, a little bit annoying. I wish there was a way to, to rewind and, and replay your uh, your moves. Like maybe before combat, if if that was like they didn't want people to try to get into a fight and get lucky damage and then keep replaying, maybe until you get into combat, um, lock that or, or unlock it. And then as soon as you touch um, an enemy to get into combat, uh, unlock it or lock it out or whatever but anyway it's uh interesting game we're gonna play a lot more of it and hopefully have a, a better uh review or at least a, a time to talk about it in the next episode um next up is knights of the round cable which is 99 cents i know nothing about this game jared other than i saw some screenshots uh wh- what do you think or what do you know about this game so it's it's um being published by chill and go um you know because they bring out something pretty much every week of the year and uh, it, it looks like you play these old, like, King Arthur knights. And it's obviously, as you can tell, knights of the round table, rights of the round cable. It's a play on words. And the knights swing around in circles, and you are rescuing princesses. So I picked it up, and I will be playing it. Um, but, yeah, it looks really interesting, and it'll be interesting to see what, what uh, how it comes out. It it seems to be getting some, some good... I, press and i'm excited to play it so cool okay cool i'm moving on and the next one we're going to talk about is tiny wings um just was it just after we recorded the last episode the teaser thing came out or did we even did we did we manage to talk about it on the last episode i can't remember we didn't talk about it on the last hog and then you ended up mentioning it on uh these or the bonus stage right because it had just been released that day um so um i guess uh andreas illiger uh basically put out a teaser last week that there was a new tiny wings coming out and to uh watch watch the space it was coming out uh, next week uh, which it was a really cute uh, teaser trailer as well uh with like this a paper and and hand-drawn art and stuff like that he made his own music box and and things it was it was pretty cool um so it, it came out and it came out as an update so if you already own tiny wings you got tiny wings 2.0 as a free download or a free update um, it adds another mode to the game where you're having a race with three other bird buddies of yours to get to the nest first um, there's a bunch of levels each of the levels has one to three stars so the the typical ios formula where you try to do bad, better good better best and um and, and try to try to win you try to get the high score or whatever or is there stars or is it just like the high score i can't remember I'm going to have to That's look more in. of a high score game. I think, I, think. I think it's more of a high score game. So I might have misspoke there for a second. Um, so that came out um, pretty cool. Uh, it adds a it adds a lot of functionality, like pretty much a whole new game to the game that was already pretty awesome. Um, so I, I booted it up and and played it, and it was it was pretty fun. One thing that's weird is I guess when I deleted Tiny Wings off my phone uh, way back in the day, because I, I I pretty much finished with it. All my um, Game Center achievements went with it. So I, I got all of them, and now they're all gone. So I'm kind of sad there, and I'm, I kind of don't want to play the game anymore because of that. Um, but I, I will because I, I love Tiny Wings. I'll have to get back into it. Um, but more, more. sorry, you were going to say something? Did I cut you off? No, I was just saying it was kind of interesting because it kind of looked like it was going to be a new game, and then it was just a big update. Yeah, yeah, which I guess is better because you don't have to pay money for it, um, which yeah. is kind of cool. Um, but you do have to pay money for a kind of a new game. So I guess he didn't lie because it is a new game. There's Tiny Wings HD that came out um, as well this week, um, I guess yesterday. It's two ninety nine on the App Store. It's iPad only. And it's Tiny Wings and Tiny Wings uh, 2.0 um, put into the same game. So you can play it on your iPad on the bigger screen uh, and have fun with that. Um, so if you if you like Tiny Wings and you want to have it with you on your bigger screen, you can do that, uh, which is great. And and funny enough, I played um, Tiny Wings mostly on my iPad at double resolution when it first came out. Um, so I might pick this one up just to, to replay it that way. Uh, the really cool thing about Tiny Wings HD is there's a split screen multiplayer. Uh, so you basically put the iPad between you and your partner. And uh, you you can have a multiplayer competition where each of you gets one half of the screen and and whoever gets furthest wins. Um, so it's kind of like the race mode, um, but you can play with uh, with two people. So um, kind of dig that. Uh, I I know my wife Kara is a huge Tiny Wings fan, so I might just pick it up just so we can uh, can play together because she she really loved the first game. So um, I'll check that out. If I, if I do pick it up, I'll definitely talk about it in uh, next week's episode. 
another big release, uh, and yes, we're talking a lot about big releases, is um, a game called Amazing Alex, and that is Rovio's next big game. So the creator of Angry Birds finally came out with a new game, although it's not a game that they that they made. It's a game that they bought and reskinned. Um, Amazing Alex was uh, what was it called before? Casey's Contraptions, right? Yep, Casey's Contraptions. So Casey's Contraptions was a, a dollar, I believe. Um, it started more expensive. I think it dropped down to a dollar. And basically you play a kid who makes contraptions. It's like The Incredible Machine or some other games where you make kind of a physics puzzle with all these items. Um, interesting enough, they were about to release an update that added a universal support to it. Um, and that never came out. And then they announced that they the game assets, not the company, but the, the game and everything about it, the IP, was bought by Rovio. And so that game came out. It's in two versions because it's 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 Rovio and that's what they do. So you can buy the real version or the sorry, the iPhone version for ninety nine cents or the bigger uh, um, Amazing Alex HD on the iPad for two ninety nine. Really hate this. Um, I understand why uh, Angry Birds exists in two versions for the first version and seasons because well, iPad wasn't out when this game first originally came out. Um, but get things like Angry Birds uh, in Space, um, Amazing Alex, I don't understand why there's two versions. It should be universal, and I think it's just a way for Rovio to pad their numbers. So people like me will want to buy it on both devices uh, because I'm stupid. And now they've sold two copies, and but only one person had bought those two copies. Um, and I think that's kind of what they're doing here with Amazing Alex. Um, if they want to... If they want to charge people more for the iPad, but want to get the, the cheap sales on the iPhone, make it so that when you buy the iPad version, that one's universal. So if I pay the three dollars for the for the iPad version, it's universal. So I don't have to buy two versions of the same game. It just I don't know. It just it just irks me in in this in in this like day and age of iPhone gaming. I mean, it's been out for a good number of years where you can download games uh, i would have thought that everything is would be universal if a developer is making a game on both devices it should be one download um but anyway um that's kind of my little rant i guess so amazing alex is basically cases contraption um almost 100 percent cases contraption so it looks like a lot of the same assets uh, a lot of the same levels and gameplay so if you played that one before maybe you don't want to get this one um but they're they are adding stuff and since it's from rovio you know they're going to keep adding level packs down the road i'm sure um and things like that um we'll see how this one does for them it, it was a fun game when it was um when it was casey's contraption um i know you played it right jared didn't you yeah i played some casey's contraptions i i didn't beat it 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 is, feels very much like the incredible machine from the old days but yeah. uh yeah it's it's an interesting title and i was just like you said, I really think they should have released it as a universal app and uh, was kind of disappointed by that. And I was hoping they'd at least come up with new levels, but yeah. it looks like a lot of the levels are recycled. Yeah. But I guess that's okay because you can't buy Casey's Contraptions or anymore on the store. You can only buy The Amazing Alex. So um, One of the big things with Casey's Contraption was building your own levels and sharing them. I, I don't know if that is actually even included in this one. Oh yeah, it is build and share levels. Okay, so that is still included. They didn't at least at least they didn't pull that out, um, which I could see Rovio doing. Um, so uh, that is still in it as well. So that's a good thing. Yeah, because lots of people have wanted to build and share for for uh, Angry Birds for the longest time, and they just have haven't done it. And so I thought that they'd pull that out too. Uh, this is kind of off topic and not related to iOS gaming, but did you hear that um, Angry Birds was announced for consoles and other portables? Yes, did you see the pricing? Yeah, if you want to get Angry Birds, which includes Angry Birds, Angry Birds Seasons, Angry Birds uh, in Space, I believe, and is no, there another one? No, no space Rio. Is not in space it. isn't included. It's Rio. That's right. There's the three versions. They want 40 bucks for it on your DS. Are, are they oh, in 30 for your DS, but 40 for your oh, PS3. Oh, that's what it was. Are you insane, Rovio? Like, I could buy all those games for three dollars on my iPhone, or I could buy them for thirty dollars on my DS. It's just two dollars this week because Seasons has been the iPhone oh, game of the week. Oh, that's right. That's right. So that one is free. Oh my <laughs> goodness, that is so just two dollars on your iPhone or forty dollars on your PS3. Oh, just blows me away. It just makes absolutely no sense. 
Those things are better look really, really good. <laughs> wow. All right, and enough enough Rovio bashing. Let's get into the last game I wanted to make mention of, and that is uh, Tap Tap Revenge Tour came out as well. It's uh, free download, and uh, Tap Tap Revenge was kind of like one of the first real games on the iPhone <clears throat> before version two of the OS came out. When there wasn't an app store, um, there was people that were jailbreaking their phones, and then and then there was a, a jailbreak app store where you could download games. and And Tap Tap Revenge was one of the first ones. It was called um, it wasn't called Tap Tap Revenge. It was called something else. I can't even remember what it was called. Um, Shortly after iOS version 2 that had the App Store came out, it was announced that one in every five uh, iOS devices had a copy of TapTap Revenge downloaded on it based on UDID. So it was super popular. Um, Tapulous, the company that made it, was then bought by, I believe, Disney. And because uh, they had been, been coming out with a whole bunch of like um, TapTap Revenge, Metallica, and Coldplay, and, and Madonna, and Lady Gaga, and... Um, a whole bunch of other ones and then it kind of just like petered out and stopped um they came out with another version before that happened where they were trying to do like guitar hero or or rock band where you had kind of a you had a a profile that had a star level on it and that was how good you were at the game and and you could win credits or buy credits to buy more songs and things like that and then it kind of just petered out it looks like they're kind of doing a, a reboot with uh, Tap Tap Revenge Tour. Um, it basically, basically, you play a tour manager, and uh, you're still playing Tap Tap Revenge, but you're, you're, it's it's more along the lines of what a Guitar Hero would be than what a rock band would be. If you're familiar with those titles, <clears throat> there's other songs you can buy and other things like that. But uh, it's a free download. Uh, definitely check it out if you're into those kind of rhythm action games on iOS. It looks like it's really well done. I've downloaded it, but I've just been so busy playing other games, I haven't had a chance to uh, even check it out so um if you if you like uh if you like you some tap tap revenge you definitely want to check that one out yeah and one thing that they do is they'll usually have like different songs that are free on different weeks and so that's mm -hmm. always kind of cool that you can play different songs for free without paying anything yeah they have um jam get ready to jam as you play the latest tap tracks and discover a new free feature track of the day or week so they're gonna offer up free songs to only play not to download i'm sure um once a week or or once a day, maybe. I don't know. It's very, it's very odd that sentence. On the day <laughs> or the week. Well, it, which which is it there, Tapulous? Is it is it of the day or is it of the week? Uh, but anyway, uh, tap tap tour revenge tour uh, free if you want to check that one out. All right, man, that's going to do it for notable releases. We're going to kind of do this. Um, one of the reasons why we picked Thursday as the day to do um, the tog is games come out at like. Thursday. That's the big release day. So usually they come out um, Tuesday or sorry, Wednesday at like 11 p.m. my time or 10 p.m. my time. Um, so doing a show on Thursday really kind of makes sense. We're talking about games that just came out. So uh, if you like us talking about games that just came out, let us know. Um, we'll, we'll spend a lot more time doing it. If you don't, let us know and we'll spend less time doing it. Uh, just kind of kind of uh, give us an idea of what you want to see in future editions of the TOG. All right, the only news item we have for this uh, week really isn't much of a news item. It's more of a release date, and that is Field Runners 2 is coming out next week on July 19th. So uh, a lot of people have been asking, when is Field Runners 2 coming out? There you go, next week on Thursday, so we'll, or Wednesday at 10 p.m. Central. So I will talk about it next week on Thursday, and I'm sure Jared will too, because I know you're a big Field Runners fan, or you yeah, used to be. Yeah, I'll be buying that one. Yeah, I, it, it's really crazy, because it's been like two years, but were the first runaway hit on the tower defense yeah. games that now are you know there's 800 of them in the app store <clears throat> yeah so it's really cool that they're finally coming out with the second one and it looks like they've actually really taken it to the challenge to to try and change a lot of stuff and and make it a lot better so i will be buying that one on as soon as it comes out cool all right, well, that's going to do it for notable releases and news. Let's get into uh, app and game reviews. Uh, we got some good ones for you. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Squid's Wild West, uh, The Act, and Outwitters. Um, so do you want to do a joint review first, Jared? Yep, that sounds great. All right, so we're going to talk about Squid's Wild West. It's uh, $0.99 cents on the App Store right now. Um, 
I, I've been playing and loving this game. It's I've not fully completed it. Um, there's still a lot of levels and a lot of stars to do, but um, I, I've been playing so much Squids uh, over the last uh, week uh, that I feel pretty good about reviewing this one. It's it's really, really well done. Um, this game comes out from uh, the Game Bakers, and as I said, it's a dollar on the App Store with a lot of in-app purchases. Um, interesting thing in this one is none of the in-app purchases are really required for anything else other than cosmetic stuff or to kind of buy um, items but we'll get into that a, a little bit later um, squids is basically a, a top-down RPG physics hybrid um, if you're not familiar with the game if you didn't listen to Jared's uh, first review of squids you play these little squids and uh, since squids have tentacles you, that's how you move in the game you pull back the tentacles and let go and then you send your squids flying um, and that's where the physics kind of come into it um, really interesting the cool thing about uh, squids is you have four characters in your party or up to four characters in your party and they each have a different role so you have um, your your scout who has a special ability to kind of dash you have your gunslinger who has a special ability to, to, to shoot once or multiple times around depending on the character you have you have kind of the big tank guy that that does a ground pound and then you have the healer who heals you just by if you fire your healer into another character it actually heals uh, with the other character and uh, there's a whole bunch of unlockable characters in the game and unlockable hats which actually do something in this game unlike most other iOS titles that have hats uh, you actually buy the hats as a way to kind of upgrade your character um, really unlike anything else on the iOS uh, app store and really well done and unique I, I know you're you're a huge fan Jared so why don't you just talk a little bit about um, sort of the gameplay of Wild West yeah so I was a huge fan of the first one and there's there's Really, it's it's similar in the second one, but you if you haven't played them, I almost recommend going back to the first one. W would you say you you agree on that? Play the first one first. Yeah, definitely play the first one first um, because you you bring over some of your stuff from the first one. It looks like I'm I'm not sure if you do, but it looks like you do because you your characters start at level fifteen, which is what I, I ended the game at level twelve or level eleven or whatever. And when I started the game in Wild West, all my characters were level 15. So it looks like some of that was brought over. Yeah, and I think that mine started a little loader because I didn't play some of the extra levels that were in it. And right. so uh, I didn't play some of the extra levels, so my, my squids didn't get up quite as high. And because of that, they, they when I started Wild West, were not quite as high. So let's see, what are some of the things that they add? First of all, they add mounts. Mm -hmm. So... I think that's kind of funny because, you know, they're squids and you're in the Wild West. And what would it be the Wild West if you didn't have seahorse mounts? Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of cool. Uh, to be honest, I haven't played it quite as thoroughly as you, even though I love the first one, just because I haven't got to it yet. It's in my my uh, one that I'm slowly playing. Um, I think I'm through about four or five levels. So uh, it, it seems to me like the story... They, they try to improve on the storytelling in it a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Because the first one's just kind of going along, the story kind of loosely strings it together, and I feel like the story's a lot stronger in Squid's Wild West. Yeah, and the, the story revolves around this black goo that is invading the the world that you're in uh, obviously it's it's oil of some sort and if it touches an enemy it turns them evil and they blindly will attack uh, other un um I guess dirtied up uh, characters and uh, the story revolves around you and your two friends who are after treasure um, it, the treasure in this world is pearls so when you kill enemies you get pearls and that's used as currency in the game and uh, then you happen upon these black goo covered characters um, and, and then you figure out that there's a big bad guy which is this looks like a big octopus that is covered in all these things um, and then you get into Wild West where they kind of take that and uh, there's characters um, um, that you uncover that have feuds with each other or don't like each other. Uh, there's people that think that you're attacking them because their 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 whole their whole cities were basically destroyed by um, these goo covered creatures. So they've kind of taken what was kind of a an add on to the game in the first one and kind of made it kind of part of the full experience, which was kind of cool. Yeah, and and overall, it seems like there's more levels in West Squid's Wild West than there was on. Uh the original, mm -hmm. but that might just be because I didn't play the extra levels that were added onto the original after it came out. Right. But, uh, there are, there is a, a significant number of levels. I, I don't know how far, how many do you think there are like 
15 or 20? Uh, let's see. There's uh, 36 stars, 30 stars, 18 stars, 18 stars, and 18 stars. So, yeah, that looks like there's probably about 50 levels if you include all of the bonus levels that are in the game. Yeah, so there's actually way more in this one because I, I think there's only about 20 in the first one. And uh, so at 99 cents, it's a great value you, because, you know, to get all the way through this game and level your squids all the way up, you're going to be playing this for quite a few hours. Mm -hmm. Um and enjoying it at least i really did i i kind of compared it to like angry birds meets final fantasy tactics yeah yeah that definitely. you have to balance and and then the hats the hats are actually kind of cool so you, the hats you can get in different that you end up finding some of them in the levels um or if uh there is some ability to buy can you actually buy the hats um with real money Yes, but the hats that you buy with real money don't actually give you any stats. They're just cosmetic. Okay, so you can go ahead and get some some hats, and the hats will do different things. They'll either give you different powers or make your guys a little bit stronger at something, um, which is really great, and it makes it so the hats are kind of funny, and some of them are really goofy looking. Um, so, yeah, it's it's great, and it's kind of funny but at the same time, it actually does something for you in the game, so that's kind of good. Yeah, exactly. Um, the the hats, what the hats do is you buy them, and you find them in the game rather, and then you buy them with in-game currency, and then you basically apply their stats to your other characters. So um, one of the hats might give you more speed and a little bit more of your toughness. Um, and the good thing about hats is they're not used up so any other character of that class so if you find another scout class character you can then apply all those hat upgrades that, that you've already unlocked so a little bit different um in in upgrading than other rpgs that i've that i've ever seen before um yeah so in the game there's um unlockable squids unlockable hats and then items and the items basically do things to help you so um if you're having a problem with a level and you keep dying, you can you can get things like the tentacle grip, which basically prevents the last character that fell into a pit from falling into the pit. Um, there's a miracle tentacle, which gives you, um, if you get KO'd by an enemy, it basically gives you a, a free life so you can come back um, to life and, and not, uh, not die. There's the mighty kraken, which basically destroys or really heavily damages all the enemies in in a level um, there's shurikens um, you basically let one of those loose and they will fly after like heat seeking like shurikens basically they, they're, they're actually like uh, like um, I don't know stars that you'd see in the bottom of the ocean um, and uh, they will actually seek out and destroy some of the enemies there sushi gives you um i guess because of all the wasabi uh it, it gives you some health but also makes you move faster and stronger uh there's a cocktail which instantly will um give you all your life back give you all your movement points back rather give you some life back and then also sometimes give you some of your special powers back um explosive jellyfish are in this game as well you send them out um just by swiping on the screen and if they hit an enemy or a friendly character they explode and there's the pearl fish which is an item that you can buy in this game in squids one you had to buy it for 99 cents which i did to kind of reward the the developers and what it does is it doubles all the pearls that you get from beating enemies um in this game you actually buy it with 4,000 or 4,500 in-game pearls um so do that early on in the game save up 4,500 and buy it so that for the rest of the game all your pearls are doubled that come from defeating enemies um and then what they've done in this game is in, in the first one, you could buy pearls flat out. So you could buy a pack of 20,000 pearls and use those to upgrade your character and all that stuff. In this one, they I guess they didn't want you to build a to buy your way to winning. So um, there's six or seven items that you can buy um, from in-app purchases. Um, they range from 99 cents to five dollars. And they're mostly just ways for you to throw money at the developers so they keep producing other titles because they don't really do much um the bundle help, help pack for 99 cents gives you three of the tentacle grips uh, the miracle tentacles it gives you a crack in five cocktails six sushi five shurikens and five jellyfish for a value of five thousand pearls they say um so if you want items and you don't have the pearls to, to spend you can for 99 cents you can kind of recharge uh the cherry cher sorry you're gonna say something or was that just my echo coming back at me no it's actually me kind of laughing because oh. i it, you know 
at a value of 5,000 pearls. I don't know. It struck me as funny. It, it's kind of funny the way they do that. Um, the Chariot Help Pack uh, basically gives you more of everything for a value of 15 15,000 pearls for $1.99. Uh, they have the Turtle Help Pack, which gives you 10 Kraken and 99 of everything else for a value of over 100,000 pearls for only three ninety nine. dollars um, it's going to make me giggle because I, I would never use all those items. It's I've, I don't think I've used an item ever in the game except for a Kraken every once in a while. Um, the Kraken Eye for two ninety nine will level up all your squids to the max level. So if you want to instantly level up all your characters, which kind of takes away some of the fun of the game, um, you can buy that for $3. Uh, Legendary Treasure is $5, um, which will unlock everything in the game. The squids, the seahorses, all the levels, and level you up to the max level and give you 500,000 pearls, which I don't understand because if you have um, all the things, if you've leveled everything up, I don't know why you need more pearls. So that's kind of a weird one, but I guess it's more of just a reward for um, the developers. Uh, the Kickstarter pack for $2 will unlock a whole bunch of levels from the first game, or sorry, a whole bunch of hats from the first game, but all they do is they look nice. They don't really do anything in the game. And then they have the Ultimate Squids Fan Pack for $5 that unlocks a Ragnarok helmet, uh, which will only customize like look nice on your characters it doesn't do anything else um, but it says and support the squids developers so they can make free updates and new games and love you forever is the reason why you want to do that one so interesting interesting way to do an app purchase in this game it, it's not a way to buy your way up in the game it's just a way to take a shortcut in buying items or basically give your characters some sort of customization yeah i thought it was a little surprising because in the first one you really could buy your way you know, pay real money to get your guys up a little faster and, and beat the game a little easier. Yeah. And this one, they kind of seem to have shied away from that a little bit, which is a good decision. I, I like it when, you know, you don't win by buying it. So, yeah. And the cool thing about this is um, it they, they do have the ability for you to permanently upgrade your characters in the game. So you could buy something for four dollars and all your characters get upgraded, but it doesn't give you like pearls so that you can kind of spend it how you want it basically takes you from like zero level to the max level so if you're a person that likes to have some sort of progression you've kind of just like destroyed that ability in the game so it's kind of almost like you're giving the money but it's also it, it's also making the game worse because the, all that progression kind of gets thrown out the window which is kind of a funny way to do it um but i guess if you're one of the people that like to spend money and win um it basically allows you to win and then go on to the next game in five minutes which i guess some people want to do yeah so overall <laughs> i think it's a really really great game it definitely um, yeah one of my favorites i i gotta say i i'm I, I didn't believe you at, at first, Jared, that it was such an awesome game. Um, I, I got to say, I love Squids 1. And uh, what do you give Squids Wild West? Well, I'm not completely through it, but I can already tell I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. Yeah, I'm the same way. It's it, it, Sorry. I was going to say, it's a must-have for any good iOS gaming collection because it is so original. It is different than anything else you, you have on in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it... it it gives a different feeling and I still think it's a little weird that you're knocking them off. Like when you knock them off the edge, cause you know, you're swimming under the sea. But <laughs> besides that one thing that I have to suspend my belief for a minute, yeah. everything else is just perfect. It's huh. a, it's a dollar. It's universal. There's hours of gameplay easily gets a five out of five for me. Um, this is a game that if you don't own it, uh, definitely go buy it. Go buy the first one. I, I think Squids 1 is $1.99, which is kind of weird. You'd think the first one would be uh, at $0.99 cents just to encourage people to buy it. Um, buy Squids 1. Buy Squids Wild West. Um, you'll be spending $3, and you'll have like 12, 15, 20 hours worth of gameplay. Um, such a fun game. Um, definitely can't highly recommend it enough. It, it is is such a, a great title. So uh, Squids Wild West, 5 out of 5 by both uh, Jared and myself. Yeah, in all honesty, it, it, if there was a TOG Hall of Fame, I would be nominating this game. Hey, so. that's a good idea. We should we should start the TOG Hall of Fame and come up with some icon that we can send the developers so they can put it on their, their webpage. That'd be great. Yeah, like our top like 10 games and something. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be cool. It, it definitely, like the Squids quickly jumped up that like i there's a lot of games which i love but i don't spend as much time doing it as i i would love 
to do like because there's so many games i put i didn't pick up other games because i was playing squids like uh, almost to an obsession it was such a fun game <laughs> and apparently the chat room is quickly agreeing us with us that we need a tog hall of fame <laughs> we'll have to talk about that off offline jared maybe we'll uh, we'll work on something like that okay so uh do you want me to go next yeah sure go my... for it okay so my my review this week is going to be outwitters and outwitters um kind of hard to say but it is a asynchronous meaning that you you know i play then you play and and games can take a matter of days or a matter of minutes depending on how quickly we're playing each other and uh it, it has some similarities to hero academy however hero academy you didn't have resource management and this one does so basically outwitters uh there are three teams um and the three teams are extremely similar to each other so there's the first team which is like the sea creatures team and then there's the team of the the like robots and then there's the team that is uh kind of the cutesy fun super cute guys and the way that they do it is they have free for the under the sea team and then for a dollar 99 you can buy another team or you can buy all of the teams plus every team that comes out in the future for 299 so they're planning on bringing out new characters or new teams. They said uh, they're trying and aiming for once a month, which is kind of cool. And uh, so in that case, I went ahead and just purchased the 299 teams. However, the one thing that happens is uh, the teams are very, very similar. Mostly the, the difference is in the animations, the the characters, you know, like you'll have your scout for one team looks very different from your scouts from the other team because one is like a seahorse and then one is like a little like spider bug thing and then one is like a little super cute guy that I can't really explain because he's it's like the cupcake kingdom or something like that it's it's something silly like that so there's three different teams um but however the only thing that varies between the teams is their super unit and their super unit costs the most and they're very different so the the sea creatures have like this guy that can like bombard people he's like a shellfish and then the the robot team has a guy that can take people over you can go and like mind control people from the other team and then the the cute guys have a instant transportation thing so you can like transport them across the board i didn't actually find that one to be i felt that one was really underpowered compared to the other two and uh, so, yeah, it's just not a huge, a huge, that's not the team that I play ever because I don't like their, their super unit. Um, and then what happens is each turn, all the players get five uh, wits is the, the official thing. But uh, you then, there's little hexes on the board that are plus wits. And so you kind of fight over those as kind of the resource management part. And the interesting thing about it is you use the same the same resource for your guy to either move or your guys to attack or to build new units. So there's only a single resource, which makes it kind of nice because you know, they, they were obviously trying to simplify it and streamline it for the iOS platform. And I think that it actually worked out extremely well for them. Um, so you can go ahead and build some units or you can either build a lot of units or, uh, or you can move a lot of units and attack but you can't really do both usually because there's not enough wits. So um, let's see what else is there. Uh, it's it's really, really cool because you can go and do a pass and play event or you can play with your friends. So I've been playing with some of the Touch of Gaming listeners, which I really appreciate in helping me. I talked about it on the the, the forum and I had a couple of people volunteer to play it with me. And uh, it was pretty pretty cool that uh, they were willing to play with me, and we've been able to knock out a few games. Um, but probably the, the one thing that really, in my opinion, sets this game apart is they actually have kind of a league system. So you play five games, and after you play five games, you're put into one of the leagues. And there's five different le- leagues, and based on which one you are, from then on, whenever you do league play 
you will be matched up with someone of a similar um, level, you know, so they're, they're hopefully it'll be a good match every single time. I'm currently in the second to highest one. Uh, so, I'll, and then if you win a lot of games in a row, I guess then that's when you get put up. And if you lose a lot of games in a row, that's when you get pushed down to the lower leagues. And uh, so I'm currently the second highest and it, it actually works really, really well. And, and I really like that because um, it just allows you to, to compete. And the one bad thing about it was they did shortly after the game came out, they reset all the leaderboards. I actually hadn't played it very much at that point. So I only lost like two games on my, my uh my my league score i hadn't even qualified for which league i was in but uh a lot of people were complaining about that but i think it was a good thing and i think it probably needs to happen every once in a while um so yeah outwitters it's pretty good here's the couple of things that i would like to say though i really wish there was a little bit more differentiation in the games uh, in the teams, because the the teams besides that they play exactly the same, and half the time because the super units cost so much, you don't even get enough of the wits to to get super units, and so the only thing then that changes is the the pictures. So I I would have liked to see a little bit more differentiation there. The other thing that I would have liked to see, and maybe they didn't do this because they're trying to stream, streamline the game and make sure they didn't go long or anything, but I would have liked to see a bigger map because most of the maps, uh, you get your little scout guy that can go five, and I don't think there's any maps that the scout guy can't cover in two or three turns. So it's I would have really liked to see that, but um, I understand why they didn't, and maybe it's something that they'll bring out in the future because it really looks like they're they're trying to support this. And so I'll be interested to to watch it and see as it develops. The other thing about it is, um, well, it doesn't take much much time as pocket planes. But I was seriously sitting, and every time I'd hear the little sound that meant it was my turn in one of my games, I would I would go log in and, and play my turn really quick. And uh, it it's just it's really good, and and I think that the the league works really really well because if you want to play a lot, you probably have to play a lot in order to get really high up in a league. But it's it doesn't determine whether or not you move up or down in, in the other leagues because really that's just a function of a win streak as opposed to um, to actually your overall amount of playing. So, you know, if I play eight games and win them all, then you, I get it moved up. But if if I play a hundred games and I'm winning and losing throughout them, I just get to have fun with all those and I'll probably end up with a, a pretty high score and be highly ranked in my league. But it's not like the, the top person in the league is the one that gets moved up. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. I am going to go ahead and give this game a four out of five. So if you really liked hero Academy, make sure to pick this one up because it's a lot of fun. Um, it's simplified, but it also has, little bit of complexity added through uh, the resource management that you have to do. And uh, yeah, so like I said, it's free. If you're going to purchase the teams, go ahead and just, you know, three bucks and you'll get all the teams that they ever bring out. Mm -hmm. I was kind of talking about it with uh, Skeezix from the chat room and we were trying to figure out what other things you could do with, with your super units. And we had a lot of ideas like, you know, being able to move twice or, you know, increase your attack. So there's a lot of things that they could do with this um, to be able to make it so they can keep bringing out teams. So, yeah, I would say, yes, pick it up, try it out, see if it's for you because it is free. And uh, I give it a four out of five. So Awesome. Cool. I picked it up as well. Uh, I just, I, I don't think I have any more time for any more asynchronous uh, games like this one. So maybe I might have to take a break. Oh, looks like I might have lost Jared, so I'm going to switch over to my camera, uh, which is good because I well, it's not good, but it's an okay timing because uh, I, I'm uh, I'm doing my review. So I'm going to talk about uh, a, a game. Um, it is called The Act, and it's 99 cents on the App Store right now. It's on sale. It launched on the App Store at three dollars. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And it's by Chilingo, um, who's put out uh, a lot of games over the years, and they're usually really, really good. So I, I almost bought this one when it first came out at $3, and I, I had so much on my plate that I decided to wait. And I'm actually really, really glad um, that I waited, uh, and we'll get into that right now. So the act, uh, I'll show it to the screen. I don't think you guys can see. There's probably too much glare on it. Is um, it, it's a game with um, hand drawn uh, kind of animation. Looks like old like Chuck Jones kind of stuff. So like old Bugs Bunny sort of um, art. Um, really, really well done, and it looks really beautiful. Actually, um, it, it's a great game. Uh, or a great looking game rather. Um, I, I really like the art style and and the game plays out like old laser disc games like back in the arcades. So um, I'll show some of the stuff. You can see an animation of my guy. This is part way into the game. Um, and my guy is with uh, w one of the the attractive nurse that he has a crush on. And basically you, you control the game. You control the animation by sliding left or right. Um, if you slide right on the screen, you do something that's more bold or stronger or something, depending on what the what the situation is. If you slide left, then you get meeker um, or whatever. Um, so in, in this case, if I slide left, he gets more uh, he gets more timid and and reserved. If I slide right, he he gets happier and and things. And, and that's how you play the whole game. You slide left or right. Like right here, I, I slid really, really far right, and then he does like the old like Bugs Bunny, Aruga kind of kissing face thing, um, which is kind of funny. Um, and then you lose. Um, and, and the game kind of plays out that way uh, in every single scene. So you're sliding left or right. Um, the game starts out with you. You're, uh, you're basically a window cleaner. You're on an old school window cleaner kind of thing. And um, you look through a window and this really hot nurse walks in and, and you basically pass out or, or you go into like a dream sequence where you're this Casanova at a bar and you're trying to woo this this woman and uh, you take her out and then start dancing with her. Um, then you wake up and you are kissing the window and your boss is there. And then you have to basically um, avoid getting fired or or smacked upside the head by her boss. And it kind of continues like that. It's, it's very much like old school, like Bugs Bunny cartoon in look and feel um, and really beautiful the way that it's animated. Uh, and then I played through it, and uh, you go from from trying to, to to soothe your boss to keep him from firing you to your friend jumps into a room and falls asleep in a bed to he gets carted off by the hospital staff, and then you have to pretend to be a doctor, and then you keep going through um, the situation, and it's probably like eight scenes in total. And then after you get past that eighth scene, it's it. It's game over, and it tells you how well you did. So my first um, gameplay is um, it, it, I got through in, I think, 20, 20 tries. So if you fail, you get to retry, and uh, you get to retry three times before it takes you back. Um, although I don't think if, if you go past three, I don't think it really penalizes you at all because you, you start out basically where you are. So I don't know why there's lives in this game anyway. Um, I read a story that they said that this game was originally planned as an old... Um, like laser disc game, uh, something that would be in the arcade. So it makes sense why there would be like the lives. Um, I, I was trying to look before the episode to um, see if I could validate that, and I couldn't find anything other than some of the stories that reference that fact. So maybe that's how it was designed, and it's just been repurposed from something from like the the, the late '80s, early '90s. Um, maybe not, but anyway, it's kind of a weird addition. Anyway. Um, so I, I played through the game. Uh, I got to the end, and um, and I beat it, and I was happy, and I was like, "Wow, that that was really quick." I looked up at the clock, and I had beaten this whole game from start to finish in 21 minutes, from when I sat down with my iPad and learned how to play, screwed up a bunch of times, figured out the control scheme, and beat the game in 21 minutes. And um, for me, I, I spent a dollar on it. And it's a really awesome experience for 99 cents, like just the, the way that you're sliding left and right and it kind of changes the animation and um, the game has no, um, no conversation in it. There's no words. It's all done with music. So here, I'll start it up and see if we, if we can get some of that music playing in the background. And, and it's all done with music. So here, it's like very quiet. And when I start sliding... It gets a little bit faster and bolder. And now I'm being stupid and doing the awuga thing. And she gets upset and then runs away from me. 
Um, so it, it's very much like old Bugs Bunny cartoons where everything is basically, uh, it's set to the music. Like the music kind of sets the tone for the way that um, everything is, is going in the game. So I, I really enjoyed all that those pieces, the music, the animation, um, the game, even the gameplay was kind of cool where you're sliding left or right. But for 21 minutes, um, 99 cents, sure, I'll throw 99 cents at a game that takes me a half hour to beat. But I, I, I feel really bad for people that spent $3 when this game first came out because you're, you're spending a dollar per 10 minutes of gameplay. And you could replay this and try to get a better score, but the game doesn't change at all. There's no branching paths. It's set animation things. Um, and you basically, you, you've experienced this interactive movie. You spent $3 and that is it. Um, I, I, I don't feel so bad, as I said, because I spent a dollar at it. It's something that I've never played before, uh, like that sort of experience. So I, I kind of really enjoyed it. And if you're if you're into like old school animation, if you really like kind of like old Bugs Bunny, um, Chuck Jones kind of um, animation, you're going to love this game. Um, the fact that it's all set to music and and you kind of interact like there's this one scene where you're 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 pretending to be doctors or you're pretending to be a doctor with other doctors. And um, as you do that, uh, the guy tells a joke. And then as he tells a joke, it's like the like the ha 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 kind of sound on a on a violin and that that's when you know you have to slide to to the right to laugh and then you go back and and you go through it and then you go forward and back um kind of good um and 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 fun and intuitive and really interesting but it's 20 minutes of a game for a dollar so anyway I'll, I'll leave it at that if um, if it's an experience you you think you would like, um, definitely go check it out if you don't mind blowing a dollar on something that you've never played before. But three dollars, it's oh, I, I I hope it never goes back up. I hope it stays at a dollar because I could never recommend this game for three dollars. Um, just when you look at all the other games on the iOS platform and what you can get for three dollars. So, um, anyway, this is the act. Um, I paid ninety nine cents. The retail price, the real price that's not on sale, is two ninety nine, and I give it a two out of five. Um, I don't one hundred percent hate it. Um, it was a really cool experience, but it was a twenty minutes um, gameplay that I probably will never play through again. So after I do this review, I'm actually going to be getting it, getting rid of it off my uh, off my iPad to save some space. So um, I don't know. I don't know. Take that. Take that for what you will. I guess <laughs> if it, if it's a game that you'd like and you don't mind blowing a dollar, go ahead. Um, but for me, it gets a two out of five. All right. Well, that's going to about do it for this episode of the Touch of Gaming podcast. Uh, looks like Quacko's internet is back up and down. Um, I'm just going to finish up the episode. So sorry, Jared, for uh, for not bringing you back on, but I can't easily bring Skype back into this call. So um, if you want to let us know what you uh, what you like, or if you want us to know what you think of the show or what you'd like us to cover in future episodes, head on over to vgpodcast.com, click contact us at the top of the page, and you can send us an email. Email us directly at vgpodcasts at gmail.com, or you can call our voicemail line, which is area code 505-VG-PODCASTS. Uh, it's 505-847-6300. Two, two. Uh, again, thanks to everybody that showed up for the live show. Um, that's Annika, uh, Skizix, Todius, or Todias, and uh, some other people that have popped their heads in. I know there's a lot of people watching on the video that didn't drop into the chat room. And just a reminder, we'll be doing this uh, every every week, at least for the next few weeks, uh, on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central. So we'd love for you guys to join us and, uh, and jump in and, and interact with us in the chat room. There's been a lot of conversation happening in the chat room. And uh, it's been really great looking over and laughing at some of the stuff uh, that people were saying, which is always fun. And just a reminder that we are going to be doing the bonus stage, which is our new general gaming show. And that will be happening uh, every single Friday at um, starting at around 10 p.m. Central at vgpodcast.com slash live. So we hope that you guys can tune into that as well. We had about 40 people last week, which was amazing. Um, and um with some of the stuff that we're planning, we're going to need the interaction. We're going to need a lot of people and uh, and, and stuff uh, for that show. So definitely, uh, if you can, please check it out. And uh, that'll be great. All right. So that's going to about do it for this episode. Thanks uh, again to Jared um, for joining me this week. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Later. <laughs>